I frequently come across the comments questioning the support of Star Citizen and labeling it as a scam. While I acknowledge there are valid concerns surrounding the game development process, it's important to realize that such a groundbreaking endeavor necessitates a unique funding model, which is precisely why I appreciate the approach employed by Cloud Imperium Games. In recent years, crowdfunding has emerged as a highly popular avenue for financing video game projects. And one game that perfectly exemplifies this trend is Star Citizen. The ambitious project has amassed millions of dollars from passionate fans who eagerly anticipate the realization of their beloved game. However, not everyone is supportive of this funding approach. For example, in a recent live patch, players were surprised to discover that their in-game ship purchases made with Alpha UEC currency has been wiped. Looking at the ships that I have, this is, I mean, I have, I'm missing a Karak, <laughs> that's a 20 million buck ship, the C2, 5 million, and yeah, I have a few left and just a, a bunch of them just missing, some of the most expensive ones missing entirely. At this point I can't even understand what the idea is here, what is it, just force you to buy with real money everything you expect to fly here, any ship you, you like and want to enjoy. Yeah, a wipe every month, grind every month. This development led to a significant question. Is CIG intentionally pushing players to buy ships using real money? While the player's inventory was saved, the ships were intentionally removed, suggesting a deliberate decision by CIG. Several players have voiced their concerns about why they should even continue playing the game if their in-game ship purchases are wiped with each update. The answer is quite clear. Naturally, CIG would prefer players to purchase ships with real money as it ultimately benefits their business. However, it is one of the main reasons why I have invested in a diverse fleet. I would rather support the project and have the ships I desire upon release. And I understand the unbelievable truth that the game is ultimately funded by the backs of the backers. Critics argue that it's unfair to require players to bear the cost of a game that may never reach completion. In this video, I aim to provide a comprehensive analysis of the pros and cons associated with crowdfunding, particularly in the context of Star Citizen, my main game. And to answer the question, in my opinion, are we back in a scam? Crowdfunding has emerged as a popular alternative financial model, allowing creators to develop, to gather financial support directly, and to target their target audience. While this approach offers numerous benefits, it also prevents certain challenges and considerations that need to be carefully evaluated. In the world of video games, this often involves launching a crowdfunding campaign on platforms like Kickstarter or Indiegogo. Fans can pledge money in exchange for various rewards such as early access to the game, exclusive in-game items, or behind the scenes access to the development process. One of the significant advantages of crowdfunding is the ability to bypass traditional funding channels such as publishers or venture capitalists. This grants creators greater creative control and independence, enabling them to pursue innovative ideas that might not always align with the mainstream market. Additionally, crowdfunding offers a unique opportunity for creators to establish a direct connection with their fan base, fostering a sense of community and allowing the greater engagement throughout the development process. Moreover, crowdfunding serves as a validation mechanism, providing a platform for creators to gauge public interest and demand for their projects. By showcasing prototypes, concept art, or early gameplay footage, developers can gather feedback and make necessary improvements before investing some natural resources into a full-scale production. This will mitigate the risk of creating products that fail to resonate with the intended audience, reducing the likelihood of financial loss. 
Star Citizen stands as a prominent illustration of crowdfunding within the video game industry. Since its inaugural campaign launched in 2012, this project developed by Cloud Imperium Games has raised an astounding sum of over $600 million from devoted fans. It promises a massive multiplayer persistent space simulation game where players can trade, mine, salvage, race, engage in PvP ship combat, and just live out their second lives in a fully realized universe. However, Star Citizen's development journey hasn't been smooth sailing. Numerous delays and controversies have led some fans and the industry observers to question whether the game will ever be finished. Critics point out that the game's initial crowdfunding campaign promises a release date of around 2014, but you know, here we are almost a decade later, and the game is still in alpha development. Frustration has grown among backers who express concerns about the slow pace of development and the lack of transparency from the, the developers. Many backers have pledged hundreds or even thousands of dollars to the game's development, hinging their hopes and their funds on the promises of a groundbreaking space simulation of their dreams. But as the game progress unfolds at a sluggish pace, with patch release dates constantly postponed and some enthusiasts beginning to feel disillusioned and disassieved, one of the primary concerns associated with player-backed funding models is the ethical quandary revolving around accountability. When a game is funded through traditional means such as a publisher or an investor, there is usually a clear chain of responsibility and accountability. If a game fails to meet expectations or is cancelled, the blame can usually be placed on the responsible parties. However, in the case of crowdfunding, there is often no clear entity that can be held accountable if a project fails to meet deadlines. This lack of transparency can lead to a misunderstanding or even outright deception as developers make a promise they can't realistically deliver on or fail to disclose important information about the project's development. And without a publisher's rigorous assessment and financial support, projects might suffer from inadequate production values, unpolished gameplay mechanics, or unfulfilled promises. Moreover, crowdfunding campaigns can generate unrealistic expectations due to overpromising and underestimating the resources required for successful execution. Developers may face pressures to meet backer demands or deliver on extravagant stretch goals, potentially compromising the overall quality and scope of the final product. This highlights the importance of conducting thorough research and due diligence before contributing to a crowdfunding campaign. Now on the other side of the coin, there are counter arguments in the support and community driven funding within the realm of video game development. Crowdfunding can act as a catalyst for innovation and diversity within the game industry. It allows for the exploration of niche genres, experimental gameplay mechanics, and unconventional storytelling approaches that might not align with mainstream market trends. By enabling projects to cater to specific interests and to understand communities, crowdfunding helps foster more of an inclusive and varied gaming landscape. It empowers developers to strive for the realization of the game's ideal vision without compromising on the quality of features. This can result in a more immersive and satisfying gaming experience, leading to increased retention and engagement in the long run. Additionally, crowdfunding allows developers to gather valuable feedback from backers, helping to improve the game's quality and address any issues before any patch release or the game goes live. Star Citizen's testing practices go beyond the conventional measures employed by typical developers. Its tiered testing structure, starting with Evocati and extending to the OpenPTU, allows CIG to gather invaluable feedback and data, ensuring for a more refined and polished gameplay experience for all players. Rather than an in-house QA team or just random beta tests before the game launches. Financial stability and motivation are other benefits for developers that aren't relying on a single source of funding, and the community's vested interest provides a sense of purpose. 
Ultimately, whether crowdfunding is good or not for Star Citizen depends on one's perspective. Some believe the potential rewards of a game like Star Citizen outweigh the risks and drawbacks of a crowdfunded title, while others prefer to wait for the game to be released and reviewed before deciding whether to invest. It's a complex and ongoing debate with no definitive answer, and of course, there are risks involved in backing any project, especially one as ambitious as Star Citizen. However, I see it as an investment in the future of gaming and a chance to support the realization of a unique and immersive experience. Ultimately, I believe in taking calculated risks and being part of something innovative, and even if it means potentially waiting patiently for the final product to be delivered. It's a trend that goes beyond just gaming, but into another realm that I also like to divulge my time into, and that's investing. Knowing what you hold and being able to weather the storm through all of the criticism gives a more fruitful payback when your dream has been realized. I personally choose to back due to my unwavering belief in its potential and the visionary goals set by its developers. Admittedly, the game's development has been lengthy and has encountered various challenges along the way. It has suffered from feature creep and an increased scope from the initial backing of 2012. I perceive it though as an exceptional ambush of product that strive to redefine the limits of what can be achieved in gaming. Ultimately, I understand how long this game will take to develop. They are trying to create a universe, and yes, the funding model is suspect at best, but it allows backers to, do, to invest their funds in what they feel and believe is important to them. Let me know in the comments below how do you feel about the crowdfunding model of Star Citizen? Do you choose to support it with your funds or are you just going to wait and see what happens in the long run? Potentially, we still have a long way to go, five to 10 years at least, before we see a viable product ready for to ship to the mainstream. I'm willing to see it out to the end and I do not second guess any of my investments I've made into this crowdfunding campaign. Well, that's all I got for you today on this topic. If you found this video informative and entertaining, don't forget to smash that like button and share with your fellow Star Citizens. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and join the Discord community. In the month of July, we have a giveaway for a 100 i starter package, shipping game. Simply subscribe and leave a comment on any video this month to participate. Well, thanks for listening. I'll catch y'all in the next one. Y'all know what to do already. And I'll see you in the verse. Peace.